Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late, uh, out of date, early morning Raw review. I did watch Raw, but I, I went to bed early or wanted to go to sleep early. And thankfully, Raw helped. Because that's what Raw is good for. It's literally a fucking sleeping pill. So that's all you're good for, Monday Night Raw. Thank you for only being good for that. You used to be a fucking good show for fucking Raw, for wrestling. You're just good for being a fucking sleeping pill. Because that's all you're fucking good for. You suck, Monday Night Raw. Fuck you. But thank you at the same time because I needed to sleep. So this show helped me fall asleep because I needed it. I wanted to sleep a little bit. Or not a little bit. I wanted to get some good quality sleep before I had to do stuff today. Because I was a bit under the weather. Not like I felt better during the weekend. Basically had like a big sore throat issue. You know, just this stupid fucking weather. I hate it. But I got better. Wanted some good quality sleep to help complement the sore throat issue. And it did help. So that's all you're good for Monday Night Raw. A fucking... Fucking medicine is not good enough to help with fucking sleeping. It's you. It's your fucking shit show to make me fall asleep. Thank you. You fucking stupid ass sleeping pill for three fucking hours of boredom. And it's the same fucking shit while I'm watching falling asleep. It's like the same shit on reruns. Every week is the same shit. Oh, but the main event. So I missed like the main event. Basically, and I missed the big thing that happened, but even though we kind of already knew it was gonna fucking happen. I honestly already knew, like, they're gonna probably have McIntyre turn heel already. I already knew in my top of my head because th that, what the fuck they're gonna, always gonna do, anyways. But, like, obviously, that's what they did. And it's like, whatever, okay, all right, whatever. Anyways, grab your Coca Cola, drink my music, spot me some bitches, go, oh shit, oh shit. Fuck okay, I'm drinking it like this. Cheers, motherfuckers. I think I'm good enough to drink it, huh? I better be okay. Don't give me a sore throat, okay? Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about this fucking show. The show started with Kelly Ann saying, What do you guys like to talk about? You know, with his stupid game most like, What do you guys like to talk about? Like, I swear to God, I'm tired of this whole, What do you guys want? You know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about how fucking shit the show is. They shut up with this fucking gay shit. I got what you guys want to talk about. That's such a gay catchphrase. What do you guys like to talk about? What do you guys like to talk about? Hey, Washington, what do you guys like? Yeah, this is this was in Washington, D.C. It's like, my God. Not a fucking reaction. Oh, you know the crowd sucked. First of all, motherfuckers, it's not the crowd's fault the fucking show sucks. And you're gonna blame the fucking... I'm, I gotta make a video about this. The fact that these fucking smarty fans... Like, how dare they not cheer for Johnny Gargano? How dare they cheer for not cheer for Tommaso Ciampa? How dare they not cheer for Tegan Knox? Like, who the fuck is Tegan Knox? Her bullshit that she gets hurt. How dare they not cheer for my beautiful... I don't know, some stupid gay wrestler, like, God, man, it's always a stupid indie wrestler that no one gives a fuck about, and you wonder why no one cares about them, and it, they should be privileged to cheer these people, how dare they, they're not real wrestling fans, the casuals are bad, shut up, anyways, Cody Rose come, comes out, he says, he talks about how he's the official team captain for his team, and anyone fights after the world champion isn't the captain, I don't know. Cody mentioned getting along with Sammy always and Jay recently, but Rollins never. Cody and Seth goes nose to nose before the Judgment Day interrupts. There's always a Judgment Day interrupting. Basically, the Judgment Day tried to do some, oh, get it, this dissension between the group. You know, you're trying to fucking go, can they coexist bullshit? You know, get it, oh, how's it to feel that Cody, and like, how does it feel that Jay was a, the, the betrayed all of y'all or something? Or basically, costed all of them titles. How Rollins hurt each of them or something. Or Cody. I don't know. Some bullshit. But then they all fucking said. Oh they wonder. Oh you know. Rhea Ripley's not here. Then who's the leader? I don't know. They kept mentioning like, who's the leader or something. And they increased. Ah oh, the leader. And they're like. Oh wow. Look. The sense between the Judgment Day. Whatever. Um. I don't know, 
not just some bullshit. Um, eventually, I don't know, they get angry. I don't know, everyone's like, oh, you know, we know we're trying to do, blah, 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 blah. And then for same saying, it's like, oh, no, this is war games. This is going to be a war. We've been fighting for too long. It's going to be a war. Yeah, you guys been fighting for too goddamn fucking long. And you wait literally for Survivor Series. And that's the problem. When you wait for a gimmick pay-per-view to do a, the, the gimmick match. Which is like, why the fuck are you doing every Survivor Series a War Games thing? I don't mind War Games being a thing. Like, it, it kind of helps. Like, why not do it on a different pay-per-view sometimes? Just relying on Survivor Series to do War Games. It's kind of like, it's going to drag out for no reason. Just saying. You can't just wait to do every fucking match on a war games, okay? Or in the in the fucking Survivor Series. You know, it would help give some Survivor Series a meaning. It's just for God's sakes, like you're waiting to do legit to give a pay per That's like, again, that's the problem when you do Hell in the Cell matches as a Hell in the Cell pay per view. You wait to do a Hell in the Cell match for no reason at the show, or you know, it's just it ruins the it ruins the prestige. It also ruins the surprise factor. Just saying, whatever. I don't know, some bullshit that happened with, oh, you know, the team arguing and shit like that. Like, who gives a flying fuck? Like, literally, who gives a flying fuck if they argue and shit like that? It's like, God knows, like, who the fuck cares? Um, so they fight or whatever. They all brawl, not they, they didn't brawl yet, but, like, basically what happened... Ron's like, you know, I'm just the fight. How about I face you guys who are not having a match yet? Me and Sammy faces you, like... Why? I hate this shit. I always hate whenever fucking, you know, uh, every time a seven lead to a match, I always hate, like, oh, I'm dressed to fight. Have a lead fight. You guys are already gonna fight them in the pay per view. Don't you worry about your fucking back. And not just that. Why? Why do we wanna see? Why you wanted to fight so badly? Why? Why every and also why every time lead to a semi leading to a match? Especially, it's always a match that no one gives a fuck. Like, come on here. I was, like, hoping maybe the fans don't react. Like, you got sometimes the dumb fans. Like, yeah! Why? And I'm always annoyed with this shit. Uh, some, a semi needs to match. It was only a match that no one gives a flying fuck about. So, eventually, mate, it's made to a match. Like, I, I Pierce, come out here and make the match. Whatever. Rollins and Zayn defeated fucking uh, uh, Dominic and what's his stupid name? JD McDuffie and McGee. Uh, by disqualification because the judge they interrupted and then everybody brawls in this segment and then Adam Pearce comes out and says like everybody stop you know uh, this is not going to be fair for the main event the main event you know he like he's like very serious now as a, as a general manager or whatever like who gives a shit he's still a goofy ass general manager that sucks he has never been a good authority figure he basically says that you know, all you guys got uh, that are not in the match later on are banned from the arena. I'm like, who gives a shit? I was like thinking, can you make the match a stipulation? I mean, oh, get it. Oh, that's the stip. I don't give a fuck. That's not a good enough stipulation. That's gay. Can't make it no DQ or something. God damn. It's always the same garbage ass match. And it was the same garbage match what I've seen on YouTube. I don't know, whatever. Um, Rhea Ripley or argues with uh, with Adam Pierce, and then Zoe Stark comes out. No fucking reaction. How did you know? Cheer for my beautiful Zoe Stark. She ain't beautiful, that's for damn sure. But I get beauty's the eyes of beholder, right, motherfuckers? She's not invited by Big Black Out, that's for damn sure. So Zoe Stark, like, you know, I, I, you know, you're busy with your day business, but I'm gonna beat you or survive series or something. And then like Rhea Ripley's like. Yeah, I've been watching this is LXT, but I gotta tell you, you won't be champion against me, you'll be champion in the other brand, but you suck or something, and then, I don't know, they push each other, or, and like, oh, wow, this is very interesting for a fucking Survivor Series match. I'm very intrigued of this stupid match that no one gives a fuck. But this is different, right, guys? It's different. Yeah, because, let's say, you had shit instead of sprinkles, it's with fucking chocolate. It's different, guys. That's why it's gonna be good. It's shit. It's shit, motherfuckers. I don't want shit. I don't care if it's sprinkles. I don't care if it's, if it's fucking chocolate. I don't care if it looks like chocolate. It's shit. Shit is no good, motherfuckers. 
For fuck's sakes! Nakamura defeated Otis. No one cares. I took three queen shots. I don't give a fuck. He pushed a Chad Gable. And then like, oh wow, we're getting to see this match next week probably. And I don't give a fuck. Tegan Knox defeats Piper Niven, a.k.a. Doedrop. She always will be known as Doedrop. We get a video package of Tegan Knox to get it. Her thing is that she's injured prone or whatever. And then like, oh, I get to fight all the best. Like, what best? No one fucking cares about these people. What best people? You ain't not close to the best, bitch. And she's like with Natty Knife Art. Like, who gives a fuck? Look with Kaiser defeated Tommaso Ciampa. No reaction. How, how did the fans don't react to this great match? No one cares. Exactly, you guess no reaction. Defeated another bitch who had no reaction. So what's the point of this shit? Who cares? Any Hartwell or whatever. Wait, referee stoppage. After the match, Becky Lynch comes down and says that you know, you ain't gonna run around for me from the back because next week we're gonna fight next week or something. I don't know. He goes to attack her or whatever and then, like, there he cheats. Like, you guys clearly already have a match and you guys wanna fight each other. I don't fucking know. Do I care, man? I don't know. Becky is gonna face Zia Lee next week on Raw. Yeah, I'm Becca is gonna bring in some viewership. Backstage, we see Shayna confronts Zoe Stark and whatever. Then every other bitch from like the Fatal Five Way as Crown Jewel interrupts, and we see Nia Jax and Rick Hale having a fate. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about these She Hulks. Rick Hale's not a She Hulk. She at least looks more feminine, but you know, I don't give a fuck. The Miz defeats Ivar, guys. Before the match, I think Gun Miz and Gunter had a face off or something. Earlier in the show, the Miz intimidated fucking Gunter, like, you know, uh, you know get to the trumpet. Like, he acts like he, you know, like, uh, I don't know, he was like quoting it, but he also acts like he was like Arnold or something, but like, I don't give a fuck. I don't know. I guess get to the chopper is iconic because you get it because it's Arnold's line, because that's all we know. It was like, okay. No one really knows what the fuck Gunter I said, I guess. I don't know. Bronson re attacks Ivar after the match or something. I don't care. It doesn't really make any sense how the Miz defeated him. I don't care. Damon Priest tells J.D. McDoofy head that he's finally a member of the Judgment Day. That it makes J.D. McDoofy so happy that he's going to get a gay pegging so bad. He can't, he's so waiting for it. He loves it. In this year, the f confronts Ludwig Kaiser for God knows who gives a fuck. Next week, we're going to Men's War Games Advantage garbage and Nia Jax versus Raquel and Becky versus Exili. Who gives a shit? Um. I don't care. I think that's what happened. I don't know. No, do I care? I fell asleep, I think, during the Miz match. What did I tell you about the fucking Miz? So I guess the main highlight, everything is pretty boring, but the Miz is basically the topping of the cherry, where he will help you fall asleep. So I guess that's what, all you're good for, Miz. Thank you. Um, backstage, we see a few uh, the dances with some fucking stupid shit. And we see all the gay baby faces are together. It's like, who gives a shit? How is this funny? Do they not know what's funny? Like, does this show not know what the fuck is funny? Like, I swear to God, like, this show, like, they do the most unfunny shit possible. Like, they're not cool. And I hate, you know what I hate, too, about this fucking show? That WWE, they try to be hip. Yo, look at Rick Rollins, that jip. Look at fucking, you know, oh, look at, you know, they try to use these gay quotes that fucking people, you know, nowadays use the terms like, oh, the Riz or something. Like, they'll try to use all these terms that they use nowadays. And, like, it's so lame that WWE uses it. Like, motherfuckers, you are not cool. I'm sorry. Stop trying to be cool. That's like a grandpa trying to be cool. Shut up. And it's so gay. Oh, here's what happened to Miz's segment with Gunter. Miz tells Gunter he doesn't care what he thinks if he's a true contender or not. He's been a WWE for 20 years, winning championships, and, you know, he's been champion for... He has held his that's why he held the title a bunch of times, and blah, blah, blah. Gunter just chuckled and told Miz he wished he'd uh, give him good luck tonight. But keep in mind, whatever happens, that nothing's compared to what Gunter does to him. I don't fucking know, whatever. This is literally just... You know Gunter's gonna win. Like, come on here. Whatever. Uh, in the main event, the Judgment Day defeated Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. Not Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso. When the referee was not seeing McIntyre claim more Jey Uso. Because, again, he's still angry, apparently. 
Oh yeah, early in the show, he shaked hand with Rollins. Like he basically says, you know, if Roll if I would want you would congratulate me, but I'm here to return the favor and congratulate you. So you know, this oh this was a surprise. This was not a surprise. Maybe this might lead to some shit next week. That like Rollins like, why the fuck you did what you did to like Matt Rollins? I don't give a fuck. I don't know. So yeah, McIntyre turned heel. He basically attacked Clinton J. Uso and he shaked hands with Rhea Ripley. Basically lying himself with the Judgment Day. Does that mean he's in the Judgment Day? Not, don't, no one knows. But that could mean that, you know, they might turn this Survivor Series back to a 5-on-5. Five five, and then the returning Randy Orton will join the other team this most likely. It would make more sense if Orton re returns if he was to be against the Bloodline. Wouldn't that be true? It was just why. I still in the agreement. Like, why not? Why isn't it the Judgment Day and the Bloodline versus Team Cody with the baby faces, including maybe Cena? Apparently, Cena is not going to ever, like, it's not going to be wrestling anyways because apparently he's scheduled, he already had surgery for, like, an injury he has, which, that's a bummer, you know? I mean, it would have been nice to have him on Survivor Series. Maybe he had that surgery after, but what can you do? Whatever. I mean, why not? A bunch of baby faces that have issues with the bloodline, and the Judgment Day, including LA Knight and, and whatever, and then the returning Ray Orton. It could be, again, it could be the biggest War Games match possible. It's what it should be. That's what we thought that we were going to do when they were having fucking these Raw guys on SmackDown, SmackDown to Raw. Wouldn't that have been made more sense? Like, but no, it's bullshit fucking exclusive Raw shit, and we get a gay ass fucking War Games with the women. Like, no one gives a shit about women's goddamn wrestling. You don't need two War Games. You don't need fucking something with. You don't need some brand exclusive bullshit. Oh, whatever, man. This is why I hate the brand split. I hate the brand split. And I hate fucking... You need to play a quality bullshit. Like, fucking hate. You know what's quality? When a woman fucking attacks you, you hit the women back. When they deserve it. That's why I saw, like, fucking... I saw, like, a Vine or whatever. I saw, like, a freaking... Uh, a, a short video where all the men attack the women. At, like, you know, in WWE. Like, you see, you see Austin be, being bitches up and whatever, but you don't see that shit anymore, because that's not PC, like, give the give me a fucking break. Anyways, back in time, turn heel, whoop dee doo that's the only big thing of the show, but we already knew this was gonna happen, it's not really that surprising. Whatever, good for him, I guess, I don't give a fuck, okay, I really don't, I really don't care, you guys killed my intriguement with this shit anyways, so the show's boring, garbage, it was good enough to be a sleeping pill. Fuck this show. Fuck wrestling. That's what I'm done saying. I'm just keep real. Get your games closed. Magnificent. Five minutes. Bitches go. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's what I'm done saying. Till next time. Peace. Yeah. Bye.